remember the very consoling words from the removal last night that all the ties of love, friendship and affection do not unravel with death. So we feel deeply united here today with those here present in the church and those who join us on the webcam as we gather with Enda and Ursula, with Anne and Claire and their families, with Declan and Connor in California in the early hours of the morning, with Kieran and Dara, with Owen in Morocco, with Eina, Marie and Fionn, with Marie's parents at about midnight in New Zealand, nephews in the United Kingdom, many priests who send prayers but can't be here because they have other duties, and with the huge number of people who queued very patiently and gladly for the last two days to offer words of comfort, consolation and gratitude to Bridie's family, to which we add, as I said last night, the esteem, the affection, the love and the gratitude of the whole parish as we discharge a very important Christian duty which is made very easy on this occasion, that of bearing witness before God to all that was good and honourable, all that was Christ-like in the life of Bridie, a life of love and service of your dear mother and our dear sister. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You show us the way to the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant, Bridie, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Let us be attentive to the word of God, our readings read by Enda and Anne, and the psalm sung by Marcelin. First reading, <clears throat> there is a time and a season for everything. The reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time for war and a time for peace. God has made everything suitable for its time. This is the word of the Lord.
the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. As for me, I'm, ready, I'm already being poured out as libation. Another time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, Amen, I say to you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will become joy. When a woman is in labor, she is in anguish because her hour has come, but when she has given birth to a child, she no longer remembers the pain because of her joy that a child has been born into the world. So also with you, you are sad now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and that joy no one will take away from you. The Gospel of the Lord. Some of you are here for Bridie, some are here for Mrs. Shields. Bridie to some, always Mrs. Shields to others of every generation. It took me at least a year, I suppose, after coming to the parish before calling her Bridie. There's so much that could be said here today, and you know, it's all superfluous, anything I might say, because you know it already, you know everything that there is to be said about Bridie. Were we to simply say she was a good and decent Christian woman and neighbour and may God reward her, we would have said it all. But perhaps we can do a little better than that. The Gospel said you are sad now, something of an understatement. It doesn't set the tone for our gathering or our funeral mass today. There's the sadness of pain, the sadness of regret, the sadness of bitterness and anguish. We may be sad for ourselves, sad for Enda and Ursula, for Claire and for Anne, but we're not sad for Bridie. And any sadness that we may feel will be very short-lived. As the Gospel promises, you will see me again, and that joy no one will take from you. All of life, for all of us, is ultimately about striving to see one another again in eternity. It's the only question that matters. Will we be together in the life of the kingdom? I'm very glad that no one said to me, at least in the last couple of days, isn't it sad about Bridie? Because I would have very quickly said, what's sad about Bridie? There's nothing sad about Bridie Shields, and there's nothing sad now in the manner or timing of her parting. Bridie had no self-pity. How could there be sadness looking back on a long life lived so well and so fully, so gladly, so generously, so gratefully? We may indeed picture Bridie in her later years and have here a photograph, a recent photograph in old age, but that of course is only a very small part of the story. Starting out 94 years ago, Bridget Bridie was a young, vital, energetic member of a large and loving family of eight siblings. A typical, a happy childhood for its time in her native and beloved Killincair. And a pattern soon developed very early on in Bridie's life. When she went to train in domestic science and domestic economy with the St. Louis sisters 
in Monaghan, a skill that stood to her all her life. Working soon after under the direction and the guidance of the Mercy Sisters at Our Lady's Hospital in Navan, and then for so many years very closely associated with the life and the work here in Johnstown of the Daughters of Charity of St Vincent de Paul with a very distinctive headdress at St Martha's College which was a huge part of old Johnstown life. Bridie had wonderful female role models in life and in faith in all of those sisters with whom she collaborated. The vast contribution, it reminds us, of the Irish female religious working in every area of life and every human need. It's a chapter in our history yet to be written and it's a legacy yet to be recovered and cherished. And this great influence and example of her religious sisters made of Bridie an exemplary and dynamic woman and role model in this community and in this parish. In a way, it's as if two families are gathered here today to say farewell to Bridie. Bridie's own family of children, grandchildren, great-grandchild, and we, her parish family, representing all of the generations that she has served in this parish. In 1972, having generously helped out Granny O'Brien, whose name I've learned, her Christian name was Lizzie, but always known as Granny O'Brien, Michael told me she was Lizzie. Bridie walked herself into the job, having generously helped Granny O'Brien out as a next door neighbour. She walked herself into the job when Father Keegan asked her to give it a go, but she knew her first priority. And typically her first concern was, would it in any way hinder or impinge on family life, which it didn't. I think it enriched family life. You had so many tasks and roles to perform here, from ringing the bell and helping your mother to clean the church and so forth. Ever after, if ma'am wasn't at home, there was a note on the table in the chapel. In a way, I feel very inad inadequate and aware of the responsibility and the privilege of standing here today representing all of the parish priests, and not just parish priests, but all of the clergy visiting and otherwise, whom Bridie served and more than served, whom she collaborated with. It was a job, but without a job description, without terms, times or conditions. It was much more of a role, a vital role and responsibility in the community from the moment Bridie opened the church first thing in the morning to closing it at night, to cleaning the church, to keeping the altar limbs, to arranging the flowers, the crib, ringing the Angelus bell, three, three, three and nine, being present and prepared for every mass, every eventuality, for christenings, weddings and funerals, being on hand for every significant event in daily family life of every family across the parish. First communion and confirmation, and of course, dealing with priests. And all are maybe odd in different ways. With great tact and kindness, Bridie, who knew the parish better than they did, she adapted to each new parish priest and his ways. Always discreet, faithful, loyal, never critical and always helpful, encouraging and supportive. I've no doubt she passed on to Mary strategies and skills for coping with priests. When I came along 12 years ago, we did a bit of a revamp on the sacristy to create some extra storage space. And a peculiar feature of the sacristy was that the safe over in the corner inside the door. Bridie was very particular about the safe. It was covered with a huge piece of upholstery fabric. And the moment the door of the safe was closed, she would cover it with that fabric as if that made the safe somehow invisible and was an added layer of security. 
And in my reforming zeal, I removed said uh, upholstery fabric. Bridie said nothing, characteristically, but she clearly thought that I was asking for trouble and that we'd be burgled in no time at all. But as the reading says, the time to keep silence, and she many times kept silent and said nothing and didn't need to. We knew exactly what Bridie was thinking. But the greater part of her role, of course, wasn't just serving and collaborating with priests. The greater part of any parish is the faithful, numerically and otherwise. And so she served the faithful of this parish, you and your forebears, and indeed all the newcomers to the parish. Many have said to me in the last few days, leaving Mass here on Sunday morning, the first greeting, hello, a friendly, warm greeting, and the first welcome they got in the parish was that of Bridie. She calmed the nerves of many a young couple, I'm sure, who were making an appointment to see the priest before their wedding. She was part of the, what we would now call, bereavement ministry or the ministry of consolation in the face of loss. She always kept a cool head and presence of mind when 20 years ago at Jerry's funeral, when Father Donegan, whom she was devoted to, had a little turn at Mass, Bridie knew exactly, even at her own husband's funeral, she knew exactly what to do and what was to be done. Bringing her considerable skill and ability to the role, Bridie combined so many of the functions that we now need so many different people to carry out in parish life. She was in so many ways PA to the parish priests. She was the parish PR. She was a receptionist before we had an office or a secretary. She recruited readers, ministers, counters, collectors, altar boys and then altar girls. She was strict with the sovereigns, no messing, the right shoes, well turned out, hair combed, and most importantly, as one of them reminded me recently, she always said the prayer with them before they came through this door and out onto the altar. And I'm quite sure that that training and that example of faith has stood in good stead many who are here among us today. As you will have read in the online condolences, for many people, Bridie was the parish. She embodied the parish. Last night, we had a rather a long meeting of the parish pastoral assembly, and we had to come up with a mission statement. And in so many ways, the mission statement was all of the things that Bridie herself did for the parish for so long. For many, Bridie was the, embarrass the embodiment of our parish mission. She gave many people something very important. She gave them a good experience of the church. She gave them a good experience of our parish. And she gave them happy memories of our parish. Many people, years and decades after a wedding or a christening or a funeral here, remember the hospitality, the ministry, the mission, and the warmth of our parish embodied in Bridie. Where we now have a parish pastoral assembly, we have a finance committee and a parish office. Bridie, with her native ability and the skills honed with the good sisters, she informally, but nonetheless, effectively fulfilled so many of these roles, albeit in a much smaller Johnstown. Father Donegan left me, though he wasn't my immediate predecessor, a note saying two things, how many people were in the parish when he came and how much was in the account, and how many people were in the parish when he left and how much was in the account. 300 families or 300 homes when he came to the parish, now 4,000, and a population between something between 13 and 15,000. But all of those roles that many different people fulfill now, Bridie fulfilled very effectively. And all in addition to so many other activities 
to the Pioneer and Total Abstinence Association, to the ICA, and to the Apostolic Works. And we think we're busy today. How did Bridie fit it all in? The first reading tells us that there's a right time for everything. Bridie knew instinctively when the time had come to hand on the keys. I remember having to tell her that with new diocesan regulations, I'd have to ask her, picture this, Bridie, in case you have a sinister past or anything, I'd have to ask you to be guard or vetted. I'd have to ask you to do safeguarding training. I'd have to ask you to sign up to our code of behaviour and our discipline procedure. Talk about a time to keep silence. <laughs> Bridie just gave me a look as if to say, it certainly is high time to go. <laughs> as we all know, she went celebrated by the whole parish. It was a very difficult time after 42 years, a time of transition. Would we find anyone to replace Bridie? Does such a person still exist? We're very blessed. Well, we didn't find Mary. She found us, in fact. And I'm sure that Bridie was a great help to Mary in setting her up now and fulfilling her role here so effectively and so faithfully. As we know, she was celebrated for those 42 years of service by the whole parish and acknowledged by the church and indeed by the Holy Father in just two words. And those two words meant a great deal to her. Bene Marenti, well deserved. Well done. And those words are framed in the house, in the Bene Marente uh, parchment. Well done. Well deserved. And they're words that we hope to hear from Christ himself. In the gospel we have it. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in little things. Enter into your master's joy. Well done. Well deserved. We might ask ourselves, with, we all say today, of one another and about one another, oh, I know you're so busy. How is such a commitment and a de dedication possible? Well, oddly enough, I have to admit, one of the first things that I noticed about Bridie was her shoes. I wasn't going to mention that, I didn't have the courage to mention it, but I was given the courage by Aina in his uh, letter to Granny, which was received two days ago, and in that he mentions uh, his Granny's shoes. They were sensible shoes. She said, you should always have a sensible pair of shoes, good quality, stylish, nothing too flashy, if I may say so, Clark's if possible. <laughs> I noticed her shoes because there was something very solid about them. She had great stature in her height and in her integrity. It reminded me of Teresa of Avila, who was a great mystic of the 16th century, so her head was in the clouds, but there's a relic in Rome in Tristevere, in one of the churches, of her foot. And one of my professors in Rome used to say of Teresa of Avila, her head was in the clouds, but her feet were firmly on the ground. Bridie was very grounded, and all that she did was very realistic, very practical, very frugal and economical, very simple and very modest. No need for luxury, for show or for ostentation in life. Bridie had core values. She was never critical of anyone or anything and she was never judgmental of people. The scriptures say, do not judge lest you be judged yourself. And that sense of being well-grounded passed on to her family and to all who knew her, giving the children the freedom to make their way in life and to make mistakes and to live and to learn and to thrive. As I said last night, an invaluable lesson that Bridie taught us was never to worry. Not only did she herself not worry, but she had, equally importantly, she had an ability to communicate to others her own sense of peace and calm, freedom from worry, stress, anxiety and fear which besets so many people today just in ordinary daily life. I think of St. Martha 
where Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you worry and fret about so many things, yet few are needed, indeed only one. Just concentrate on the thing you're doing now. Whenever you're feeling that way, overwhelmed by life, maybe go take a walk in St. Martha's Bridge. And as you do, think of St. Martha and learn from Bridie's example of not worrying, that there's nothing worth worrying about in 24 or 48 hours' time. The worry of the present moment will most likely be forgotten. Many a worry or a crisis in the sacristy or in the parish was very quickly dispelled by Bridie with a few words, as again Aina bears witness to in his letter, what of it? Say nothing, carry on, calmly and quietly. Bridie, she very gladly and openly accepted the development of Johnstown and the whole parish without criticism or regret. She welcomed all newcomers, related well to every generation. And that was summed up to me in a photograph that Ursula showed me the other day from just a few months ago. And it was Bridie seated in a chair, reaching out like this to Fionn, who is sitting or kneeling at her feet. Her hand extended, she and Fionn are looking into each other's eyes. It's as if she's saying to him and to everyone three generations after her, her family and parish family, as if she is saying, I wish you all the same kind of life that I had, the same love, the same security, the same goodness, the same family, and the same faith. And I know that that wish comes to us from Bridie across the generations, from her to Fionn with his parents in New Zealand, to each one of us, and to the generations which will come after us here in Johnstown. I wish you the same kind of life I had, the same love, security, goodness, family, and faith. A time to depart. In his letter to Granny, Aina says that she herself said she was just hanging on to see the next generation, which came to pass with a wonderful visit from New Zealand. The last of her own generation of siblings, their spouses and cousins, Bridie was ready to move on and to let go, which is what the Gospel says. The Gospel says that we should love life, but not cling to life too desperately as if there were nothing else. In recent times, Bridie asked the question, a very important question, do you think Jerry is waiting for me? Jerry, unspoken so far in my words, but the other side of the coin and the great partnership in life, family and faith. The first reading spoke of a time to dance. That time continued for many years with Bridie in the arms of Jerry, an elegant and graceful couple on many a dance floor. But the question, is Jerry waiting for me, goes to the heart of our faith. So many greetings in so many languages. Hasta la vista, of either saying, whatever, abiento. So many greetings in so many languages finish on that note that we may meet again in this life. We go beyond that with faith. And our hope is, well founded in Jesus Christ, that we will meet again in the life of the kingdom. Do you think Jerry is waiting for me? We all ask that question of those who have gone before us in faith. The wedding feast at Cana, which we could have chosen as a gospel reading for today's funeral, it's about the party of life, relationships being formed and nurtured and deepened, the party of life which God wants to continue forever, the dancing, the singing, the feasting, the celebrating, the living and the loving. God wants us to live lives which can continue for all eternity. To conclude, as one of the Eucharistic prayers says, loving his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Bridie loved her family to the very end, but she knew the right moment to let go, almost as if she chose the day, the day she died being one of particular personal significance to Bridie. Ultimately, all of us, whatever we have, 
We all have to let go of everyone and everything, of all that is material, finite, temporal and transient in this world. We have to let go if we are to take hold, to take hold of what lies ahead, of that which is infinite and eternal and enduring in the life to come, where love and life and relationships are perfected to continue forever. At Bridie's retirement party, I was reminded by Mary that for many weeks before, I spoke about Bridie by name in the announcements after communion planning the party, and eventually, politely but firmly, she said, Father, would you ever stop mentioning my name, she said in the church. But that, as you can well imagine, is one wish that we can't fulfill today, nor indeed in the future. Bridie's name will live on in the hearts and minds of many generations of her own family and of her parish family, who both, both her families, equally loved, respected, and cherished her, and who now gladly commit and commend her to the outstretched arms and the lasting embrace of Christ, and we hope, of Jerry, and of all Bridie's forebears in faith, to whom we pray with Christian hope she will now be gathered together forever. We stand and pray for the needs of the moment, the needs of the church, the needs of the parish and of the whole community. For all whose lives are dedicated to caring for the sick, we pray in particular for Bridie's GP, Dr. Hogg, for the staff at the Abbey Health Centre in Navan, the staff and her friends at Navan Daycare Centre at Walterstown, her carers, Abby and Christina, the public health nurses at Johnstown Health Centre, and all the staff in Our, Lady's, Our Lady of Lords Hospital in Drada, who cared for Bridie during her illness, that God may reward their goodness and kindness as they go on to serve so many others in their time of need. Lord, hear us. We pray for Bridie's family as we thank them for the gift to us and to the parish of their mother. We pray for the members of her extended family, for her great neighbours and many friends, that God may fill their hearts with comfort and consolation. Lord, hear us. We pray in thanksgiving for our neighbours and friends that our parish may retain the values of common humanity, of neighbourliness, of friendliness and of trust, which Bridie exemplified as a neighbour. Lord, hear us. We pray for the newcomers to our parish, those who didn't know Bridie in person perhaps, but know her legacy through the values of our parish. We pray that they may always be welcomed and be able to bring their skills and their gifts to bear on the life, the needs, the mission and the ministry of our parish. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for young people because Bridie covered and crossed many generations and related well to all. May they always value goodness, kindness and friendship. May they see the beauty of the gift of all human life and indeed discover or embrace the gift of faith. May they come to know God the Father's love for them each day. Lord, hear us. We pray for all elderly people that they may receive the love and the care and the respect that they deserve from their families and friends and have the courage to give witness to faith and the hope of eternal life. Lord, hear us. For all who have gone before us in faith, we pray for Jerry, we pray for Patrick, we pray for Bridie's parents. We pray in particular this morning with James and Claire for James's mother Imelda, laid to rest just a few days ago. May God one day unite us all in the happiness and peace of our heavenly home. <coughs> Lord, hear us. Lord God, Heavenly Father, may you continue to hear and answer and fulfill the hopes of your holy people hopes and prayers which we make to you in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. We offer gifts of bread and wine now so often prepared by Bridie to be presented at the altar.
that by the miracle of the Eucharist, they might become food for the journey to the kingdom of heaven. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Bridie, we beseech your mercy that she, who did not doubt your son to be a loving Saviour, may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for it is at your summons that we come to birth, by your will that we are governed, and at your command that we return on account of sin to that earth from which we came. And when you give the sign, we, who have been redeemed by the death of your Son, shall be raised up to the glory of his resurrection. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as, without end, we are playing. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, that your sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, 
and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the sacred passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Bridget and with all your saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all clergy and religious, and the entire people your Son has gained for you. <coughs> Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Bridget, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes, for seeing you our God as you are, we shall be like you for all ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. <coughs> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We kneel and pray. Together we say, Lamb of God, take away the 
the world, mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sin of the world, mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sin of the world, and us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. We await a Saviour, our Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform our lowly bodies after the pattern of his own glorious body.
pair will now offer our communion reflection. May the Lord support us all the day long till the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in his mercy, may he give us a safe lodging, a holy rest and peace at the last. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our sister Bridie may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. <laughs> Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her, ease our sadness, and strengthen our hope that one day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Saints of God, come to her aid, hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal rest, Lord, and let the beautiful light shine upon her. Into your hands. Father of mercies, we commend our sister Bridie, with assurance of and hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Bridie in this life, signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we meet in Christ and are united with our sister forever. May saints and angels lead you on, escorting you where Christ has come. Now he has called you, come to him who sits above the seraphim. Come to the peace of Abraham and to the supper of the Lamb. Come to the glory of the blessed and to perpetual light and rest. May the angels lead you into paradise. The martyrs come to welcome you. 
take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May choirs and angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham, and where Lazarus is poured no longer, may you find eternal rest. We take our sister Bridie to her place of rest beside Jeremy in Old Kilcar. Thank you. 